Hi there, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Christy, if you're new, welcome. I live in Northern Alberta, Canada in zone 2B. We are a homesteading sort of family. Um, basically, well, my husband works away uh, or works out of the home, but I basically grow all of our food for the entire year. And I'm also a second year flower farmer. Today is a day where I am working on a challenge that I've accepted to, to take on. So that challenge is a pantry challenge. Now, a pantry challenge for someone who does this as a lifestyle where you're always growing your own food, preserving your own food, and cooking out of what you have in stores, meaning what I've put up on the shelves, what I have in long-term storage, or what I bought in bulk or harvested, and harvested um, from my seasonal garden. Basically, that's my lifestyle. Um, lots of people are doing this challenge and I'm one of those people who is not getting, I'm not completely committed to it, but I am sharing um, little things that I do that do help me on a daily basis or more regular basis when it comes to these kind of challenges um, based on the lifestyle that I choose to live. So one of the things that I found in my pantry is some pastry flour that needs to be used up. So I was thinking about making a treat and normally I make these cinnamon biscuit pinwheels out of biscuit dough, but I'm thinking I'm gonna do a strawberry rhubarb biscuit. Um, and so I think I'm gonna do that right now with you as a pantry challenge item for um, for this month because, or for, for the pre-pantry challenge, I guess it is, because I'm a little bit ahead of schedule. But this is just me getting back into my routine, right? So um, I think I'm gonna use this jam. This is like a strawberry rhubarb jam, but it has zucchini and stuff in it that I made from scratch of stuff that I found in my freezer this summer um, and some of the strawberries I had harvested. So, um, and zucchini, or zucchini that I harvested and also rhubarb that I harvested from my backyard here. So to make these cinnamon biscuits, it's really easy. I generally do these Christmas morning. It's become our new tradition in our family to make these cinnamon biscuits um, or to make these biscuits cinnamon flavored, kind of like a cinnamon roll, but with biscuit dough. Um, and so, but it's, it's, it's just a very versatile, versatile dough um, or a versatile recipe. You don't have to be limited to just cinnamon and sugar or butter. You can, you can you can improvise if you have a dairy allergy you can substitute the butter for like a shortening you could um, sub things out I've done this recipe using gluten-free flour before regular flour this this recipe it's just it's really basic it's really easy it's really fun and kids love this recipe no matter what you decide to do with it so if you're doing a pantry challenge and you have fussy kids or a fussy husband this might be a great place for you to start to use, you know, start getting into the kitchen and using up some ingredients. Now, these these biscuits that I make in these pinwheels, they change every single time. So, hey buddy. You wanna come tell these guys how good these biscuits actually are? You have to duck down. Yeah. Like a 12 out of 10 for my standards. He thinks they're a 12 out of 10, people. A 12 out of 10. They're really good. And they change every time, right? Yeah, they do. It's no set recipe. They're just I wing it, I wing it. There's no, it, it always they always turn out. Um, but you have to kind of have some basic understanding of what it is that needs to kind of happen. So I'm using pastry flour today um, because I found this in my pantry and it needs to go be used up because I don't want it to go rancid um, just because. I like, I like that fresh flower. This flower is only probably about eight months old since I got it, but um, I like it really fresh and good, good quality flower. So I want to use this pastry flour up and I can use this pastry flour in this recipe because I am putting baking powder. Um, baking powder is essential in this recipe because they are essentially a baking powder biscuit. So I have a recipe for using the gluten-free cloud nine flour, which I will link below, or you could sub it for a regular flour. Whatever you want, you can sub it for. You could probably use spelt flour or even quinoa flour if you want. 
Um, you just have to make it your own and tweak it because every flower is a little bit different. Um, but for today, I'm just gonna use pastry flour because that's what I wanna use up out of my pantry that needs to be used up out of my pantry. Um, so, and I'm just using baking powder. Aluminum free baking powder is really, really essential for baking in our household because we like to detox from heavy metals. Um, aluminum free baking powder, it, I find it works better for me and my climate for getting things to rise. Um, and it just works better for us in general because um, typically if we have lots of aluminum in our diet, what happens is we get lots of skin rashes just simply because it seems to coincide somehow with the solar flares because we get a lot of solar activity up here with the northern lights. So it all kind of functions together. So aluminum free baking powder is what I'm using and I find that there's no other way, no other way around it. I have to always use aluminum free baking powder. It's a very, very important thing for me in my kitchen, for me and my family. So the fat, um, I'm gonna use salted butter because that's what I could get. Um, that's what I have, this is what I have in stock. But you could use lard, you could use vegetable shortening. If you have dietary needs, you could do that instead. I'm just using butter. If you have a cow and you're making your own butter, perfect. We should be friends and you should bring some over for coffee one day um, and I'll trade you for something. <laughs> um, might be a long trip, dress warm. I always use salt in this recipe. I don't use sea salt. I don't. I don't like the microplastics, but I do have the Himalayan salt. However, I've been it's been brought to my attention that this is something that I may want to consider um, switching out to um, to a more localized salt. So I'm kind of doing research on that, learning about it. But for right now, I have Himalayan salt because um, I want it for the minerals in here. I always try to make sure I'm doing things nutritiously. I do not use the commercial salt and I don't use sea salt because of the microplastics because we do tend to have struggles with that with skin conditions in our family when it comes to microplastics and aluminum because of our environment. It really impacts us tremendously up here with eczemas and different things. So I always make sure I don't use microplastic, microplastic e salts like sea salt, just Himalayan. Now, I have the options that I have for um, the liquid, like the liquid portion, because there's the flour, the dry ingredients, and then there's the wet ingredients, and then there's the fats. So the butter's the fat, or whatever you choose to use for fat. I'm gonna use half of a cup of butter. You could substitute that out for half a cup of lard or half a cup of shortening if you need to. I'm just using a half of a cup of butter in this recipe and two cups of flour. Um, and then I'm using approximately half a cup to three quarters of a cup of uh, a liquid. Now the liquid is either going to be a milk, you could use water if you choose to. I always prefer, if I don't have any of this stuff to use up, I prefer to use cashew milk because it's a little creamier and it's a little lower in calories because let's face it, we are really focused on calories in this meal uh, or in this, in this recipe. <laughs> so, what I'm doing is if I, if I don't have milk on hand and I don't wanna use water, and say I have a little bit of sour cream in the fridge, I will use sour cream as my, um, as my liquid portion of this recipe, or I will use yogurt. This recipe doesn't have any sugar in it. So you could use sweetened yogurt and it would probably work really good. Now, this is a strawberry yogurt. I have vanilla in the fridge. Today I'm gonna to use sour cream because I have a lot of sour cream and I wanted to use this in a freeze drying recipe that I'm making later on this week. So I'm not gonna use the strawberry. However, it's really good. You know, um, instead of using milk or water for, your, for, your, for that portion, the wet portion of your biscuit, you could easily use yogurt. You could use cash, um, the coconut yogurt, the, the homemade yogurt in the Instapot, you can make your own. Or you could even like, you could use Yop if you want. It doesn't matter, whatever. You could use buttermilk. It doesn't matter, buttermilk biscuits are pretty common, but you're not limited to just that. You can use anything you have in your fridge to make this. You could use sauerkraut if you want. It'd be nasty AF, but you could. It's not gonna make them not turn out. Um, 
the sour cream and the, like when you're baking this stuff though, um, the yogurt is probably not gonna hold any of its bacteria and it'll all be killed out. So there really isn't a lot of benefit, health benefit from cooking with yogurt or cooking with sour cream because let's face it, heat is gonna kill those bacterial cultures that are actually beneficial. But if you're looking for texture and flavor and you, you have stuff in your fridge to use up, this is a great thing to do. Um, so it, does, it gets used up and it's not gonna expire. I mean, we're making a, a treat. We're making a biscuit. It has some nutritional value, of course it does, but um, it's, it's not, we're not making a health food here. We're just, we're using stuff up out of our pantry to go alongside of, you know, with other things we're cooking so that we're, we're presenting our fussy eaters or just creating some, that something that is gonna keep us out of wanting to go to the grocery store and buying the cookies, buying the candy bars, buying the ice cream, those kind of things. This is just something really easy to whip up using some of your ingredients that are sitting there that are not getting utilized and would, you know, essentially go bad. So let's just, let's get to this. Um, Oh, and then instead of instead of doing the cinnamon version of this recipe that I typically do of what my recipe is written out for this this specific recipe, I'm gonna use the strawberry rhubarb jam you that I or spread that I made. It has very little sugar in it, um, and it, it's it's a very this this will be really interesting in this biscuit because it'd be like putting a jam on a biscuit essentially but it's wrapped up and baked together so it should be a really interesting combination but typically what i would do is i would get some butter melt some butter spread it over the biscuits spread cinnamon and homemade brown sugar over top roll it up and then cut it like a cinnamon bun and then do it that way with cinnamon so it's really just a substitution for cinnamon and butter for actual spread that i made from vegetable or from fruit that i harvested out of my garden last year so that's the only thing, um, it's so versatile. You could actually, if you wanted to do this biscuit, you could put peanut butter down. Um, you could put peanut butter and chocolate chips in this layer if you want to roll it up. You could, th this, th there's so many combinations you could do. You could even do ham and cheese, roll it up and cut it up and bake it and it'd be like a ham and cheese pinwheel. Like this recipe is so easy. You wouldn't want to use the strawberry yogurt for that, but you could easily use the sour cream or you could just use the milk. Um, and cause there's no sugar in this recipe. Remember it can be sweet or savory by just changing one or two small ingredients in the filling and then you're good to go. So anyway, less talky talky, more showy showy. So I've just added two cups of organic pastry flour, but you can use any type of flour you so desire. I am going to use a half of a cup of butter, give it a little more accurate guesstimate. Oh, before I do that, I'm adding in two teaspoons of baking powder to the two cups of flour. I'm going to add in some salt. Approximately half a teaspoon of salt, Himalayan salt. I'm gonna take my pastry blender and just give it a little mix up, kind of chunk, break up the little things in the flour. Then I'm gonna add my butter to the mixture and then get this out of the way. I like to make the butter into really small little pieces, little chunks. I don't know if you can see how well. I often get in here with my hands because um, it's just a little easier to just kind of rub them into little bits and pieces. Seems to be my preferred method. This is just to get it started to break up. 
But if you don't like touching things, just keep pastry blending and it'll be just fine. So far we have our two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, half of a teaspoon of salt, and a half of a cup of butter. And we're just working it into small little pieces. So they're just kind of like crumbly little layers of butter sort of coarsely worked into the flour, not making it into a dough, just kind of making it crumbly into a crumbly texture. I like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be some, somewhat um, broken into smaller pieces. So next I'm going to use some sour cream one glob, <laughs> two globs, three globs. So I'm using approximately three quarters of a cup of sour cream. And I'm just kind of folding over the dough. You don't want to overwork this dough, but you don't want it to be um, too, too, uh, like you want it, to, you don't want it to be too dry, but you don't want it to be really, really sticky. You just kind of want to blend it ever so softly. And that's it. This is just the dough coming together. It's sort of sticky. What I like to do is let it sit just for a few minutes and then come back and it allows the dough to have a minute to hydrate again. Then it rolls out much easier, humbly. All right, I'm gonna make some space here. I just want to combine it. So I'm just going to sprinkle, make sure the counters are really clean, wipe down good, sprinkle some flour. I've really learned, realized that I don't have enough moisture in here. So I, it needs to be a little stickier. I'm just going to add a little bit more milk because it's not really holding itself where I'd like it to be. I should have added maybe um, just maybe another tablespoon or two of the um, sour cream. That's better. So sometimes you just need to add a little bit more moisture. Sometimes just getting your hands wet is all it needs to. So it's still a crumbly dough, but it's just a little bit more hydrated. And it will stick to your hands, but that's okay. It's part of it. Getting messy is all part of it. Rolling pin. You don't want to go too thin, but you don't want it to be too thick. I don't know, it's just your preference. I go about a quarter inch thick, a quarter inch thick. And so, there. Next, I'm gonna just take my strawberry rhubarb jam and try to open it, but it's sealed so good. Oh, it smells really good. So I'm just gonna put it on top. I know this looks really gross, but I promise it'll be good. Especially if you like biscuits and jam, this will be fantastic. And I'm not adding any sugar. There's plenty of sweetness in the in the spread or the jam that I'm using. You could use any kind of jam. You could use jelly if you want. I'm just gonna wash my hands. Okay. So I'm gonna start here and just sort of start 
working it over without making it too tight and squishing out, without squishing out the jam that I just put in there. And it is gonna squish out some, but that's okay. It's okay, we'll wipe it up. Just call it rustic cooking and no one will question it. So I'm gonna put it in this little, in this pipe, in this pie plate. I have another one that I could use as well. So I'm just gonna cut them. And place. It's okay if they don't look good, they'll be fine. They taste the same. This is ungreased. They're gonna puff up, so I wanted to leave some space in between. I'm just gonna get another one. The oven right now has been preheating at 350, so it's getting hot. And I'm just gonna pop these in here and they'll be about 25 minutes, depending on your altitude and um, how hot your oven is. Hey Chaz, they're ready. Okay. Do you run? Yeah. <laughs> they're really hot. I just took them out of the oven. So you have to wait for them to cool. Sorry, I forgot to mention it. Dang. Well, I was just anticipation. So they're different, right? They are um, gyro. They kind of are. They're made with the strawberry rhubarb jam we made this summer. Okay. Do they smell? What does it smell like in here? Biscuits. Are like really good? Really, yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll wait 10 minutes and then Chaz will do the taste test and let you know how they are. Moment of truth. Mm, that's good. Like, out of 10 stars, how good? What's a 12. A 12? Yeah. Do you like the strawberry and the rhubarb? Mm-hmm. Sweet. <laughs> oh. Looks good. How long does it take you to inhale that? <laughs> Like 10 seconds. Thank you. So there you have it. It's super, super easy. 
I used something out of my pantry, pretty much everything out of my pantry. I didn't have to go to the store and buy anything, just use what was on hand. And it's kid approved. <laughs> so thanks. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.